Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Crosswalk in your Ionic Framework Android application. Um, if you're not familiar with Crosswalk, it's, uh, it's a web run runtime that replaces the default device runtime because in devices that are running Android lower than 4.4, they are not using Chromium and the ones that are not using Chromium are known to have uh, sluggish and laggy behavior when it comes to HTML hybrid apps. So Crosswalk uh, is just a runtime that, that's Chromium that, that runs smooth on pretty much any Android device. So to do this, it, we're going to start by creating a fresh Ionic Framework project. So go ahead and um, start a new project so one thing to note about this tutorial is at the time that I made it uh, Crosswalk does not support the latest version of Cordova um, and the latest version as of right now is 3.6.3. Uh, .3. So what we have to do is we have to create our Android project um, as a 3.5 Cordova project. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and run the following command uh, to add our platform. You'll notice I did the at 3.5 and that, that uh, goes ahead and downloads the 3.5 version of the Android Cordova platform. So with that said and done, the first thing that we want to do is technically we want to go ahead and download the uh, crosswalk files. So I, I've gone ahead and I've already done that. You can see them right here. A thing to note is uh, the Crosswalk Cordova is split up into two uh, architectures, the x86 architecture and the ARM architecture. You can choose to support either of those or both. Adding both will create a significantly larger application size, but you'll have support for all devices. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and support both. So let's go ahead and extract both of these. And we're going to open up our example project. The first thing that we want to do is we want to navigate to platforms, Android, and then Cordova Lib. Let's go ahead and wipe out everything inside that directory because it's going to be replaced with our new, new files. So let's go ahead and start by opening up the extracted x86 uh, archive. And we're going to open up the framework directory and copy all the files from the framework directory into our empty Cordova lib lib uh, directory. The next thing that we want to do is we want to open up the ARM directory. And we only need one folder from this, from this um, extraction. We want to navigate to xwalk core library, libs, and we want to copy over the ARM folder to sit side by side with the x86 architecture. So inside our Cordova lib we went crosswalk, libs, and then you can see that both of our architectures are sitting side by side. The final file that we need to add uh, from the crosswalk project is we need to go ahead and add the version uh, file. And the version file goes and sits in the root directory of your Android platform. So let's go ahead and copy that over. And we've officially added all the files that we need in order for Crosswalk to work. Now we just need to configure them. So going back to your terminal, we're going to go ahead and navigate to the Cordova lib, lib uh, directory. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to update this to be a library project. So we're going to run the following command. So 
So it's just it's just updated our library project, and now we want to uh, build it in debug mode. All right, it built successfully. So we are almost done. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go back into our directory structure and we want to navigate to the Android platform and edit the Android manifest. In order for Crosswalk to work, you need to add two permissions. You need to be able to allow the network state and the Wi-Fi state. So let's go ahead and add those. Now, in many scenarios, you won't need to go ahead and manually add this to your Android manifest file because you may be using a plugin that requires that these be added automatically. And you could, you could add this to your config.xml too, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and add it to the Android manifest file. So let's go ahead and save that, and if we go back, we're going to navigate to the root directory in our terminal of the project and we're going to go ahead and build the project. It's almost done. All right, the build was successful, so let's go ahead and install it. Installed and let's go ahead and open it. And you can see it's just a blank Ionic project, nothing special. Uh, however, it's not using the standard web view of whatever your device is running. It's using Chromium and it's going to have significant performance improvements. But let's go ahead and navigate back to our directory. We're going to go take a look at this file that was just built. Well, it was right here. Um, you'll notice that um, it's 37 megabytes. That's because I added both the 86 architecture and the ARM architecture. And without Crosswalk, this project probably would have been about one megabyte. So it does add a significant file size to your project. But do you want to sacrifice performance or do you want to sacrifice file size? That, I can't answer that one for you, it's up to you. Uh, I always like to keep my, my users happy by offering maximum performance. Uh, but a lot of users don't like apps that take up a lot of memory on their device. It's, uh, it's something that you have to research on your own and, and choose what works best for you. If you like this video and are interested in seeing what else I have to offer, please subscribe to my channel as well as my written web blog. Thank you.